Hello, I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting, February 24th, 2020, 7.05, 7.08, at the downtown, at the uh, South Deerfield Town Hall. Tonight we'll review some mail, take public comment, uh, and then on the agenda is a continuation of a public hearing for a site plan review application from Renaissance Builders for a proposed 3,000 foot expansion to the building at 6 North Street for an existing business, Smith Interconnect. Then we'll open a, then we'll continue the public hearing for a proposed amendments to the town's uh, floodplain bylaws. Then we'll open another public hearing for amendments to the town's marijuana bylaws as proposed by attorney Richard Evans on behalf of Gorg Inc. of uh, 198 Mill Village Road. We'll take up any old business, then some new business, then anything that was not anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Anything else? Does it sound okay? Sounds good to me. We have minutes. It's copies of minutes from the February 3rd and the February 10th meeting. Wow, we had two meetings. Uh, pass those over. These are um, minutes put together by our, and here's the, here's the 10. Oh, these separate separate these, set of minutes. These are separate. Yeah. Okay. Um, so look at, let's look at the the third first. These are put together by our um, sort of a new admin person, and um, they're basically you know she listens to the recording and it kind of puts everything in there, which is good or bad. I don't know. going to make any difference, John, because you and I weren't here for this meeting. You watch tapes? I will watch them, but I haven't. I haven't. Um, so I didn't know if to, is it, is it a good thing to vote on it tonight? Good question. Do we need do we need well, a that's what I'm four people to yeah, make I, it official? I, think I, so. I intend to go in and look at these, so um, or at least three of them. Yeah. Well, John, John, and I won't, weren't here, so it's yeah. just, it's just uh, kept and, and uh, well, I'll stop reading. Roger. Then. And then I don't know. I'm just asking. I don't know. No, I, no, I think you're right. So let's table the minutes for the February third, and here's the ones for February tenth, and we're gonna have to table these two because only. Um, only me and Kip were here for that one, so. Um, okay, so table both sets of meetings. Well, why don't we grab these and get them back? And then I'll no, take no, actually, oh, okay. what we'll I'd like them. to propose is that we actually look at them yeah. and use these as a, um, Sue would like some feedback about how to do the minutes, because I don't think these are really the way we want to have the minutes done. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, this person said this, this person said that. We really need some yeah. of these. And um, so why don't you take a copy of this and uh, yeah, pass out maybe we can the other one's on, the, on what date? Talk about how to do it better. So the, t the third and the tenth. February tenth. Okay. Pass those back over there, Kip. Okay. So I'll put down through 10, 20, 20. And then we'll table both of those minutes. Okay, but um, good. it's good to have in case something comes up tonight. At least we have some yep. notes we can refer to. Oh yeah, your name's not even on here. It's it, it, it is it, down lower. Oh okay, so it says you came in. So we should put that up on top that you were present, and we can say that if you missed the first ten minutes or whatever. But at least we can say that you're there. All right, uh, let's see. I gotta still read this announcement, I guess. Um,
That's for this. That's for ZBA. All right, I'd like to open the uh, open the continued uh, public hearing um, for the uh, building at 6 North Street, and I'll read the public hearing notice again. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing pursuant. Uh, uh, this is a continuation on February 24th at 7, uh, 7 p.m. in the Deerfield Town Hall. On the application of Renaissance Builders at 6 North Street for the proposed expansion of a 25-foot by 119-foot and 10 inches onto the west side of the existing building. So that was posted properly, and we've had a public hearing. Um, and at the last public hearing, we wanted to get some more information, so we continued it till tonight. But then we got a request tonight from the applicant that it be rescheduled. And um, so they have asked for a hearing continuation request from tonight until a meeting after March 19th. So apparently it looks like they they want it to be after the next ZBA meeting uh, because they're gonna they're also looking for a uh, is it a variance or a special permit Do you know both both and from, what's, what's after what date from again? the ZBA so apparently they're gonna meet the ZBA on or before March 19th so they would like to have our public hearing for the site plan review continued until after that because yeah. things might change after what date I'm sorry March 19th March 19th okay. So they well, signed. They signed the paperwork for the yeah. continuation. Yes. Okay. So, in light of that request, I make a motion that we continue the public hearing for the site plan review from Renaissance Builders until our April sixth meeting, if that's the date we all agree on. I'll second it. It's been a motion and a second to continue the hearing. Does anybody here from the public want to have anything to say about this? Do we have to specify a date? Yes, because you got to write it down here. Yep. And um, so the next meeting after March 19th would be the first Monday in April. That's not a holiday Six. or anything, right? It's not a voting okay. day. All right. Oops. So, Roger, the, mo the motion is to continue the hearing on Renaissance Buildings, the 6th North, North Street building, until um, they ask for it to be yes, continued. Yes, I heard that. So um, we want to propose that we uh, we uh, continue until April third. April six. April, April six is the first Monday. April six. April six. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Four zero zero at seven o'clock. Yeah, that was a quick public. Yeah, that's good. Flood plan. Uh, that's all I got. Oh, there it is right there. Perfect. All right, I'd like to. Um, so that by continuing, we can also close that. We close this public hearing. No. For that, right? Or we continued we, it. Continue. We continued it. All right. Continued. So we're finished right. with it tonight. Yeah. All right. So next up is uh, to continue a public hearing for the town's floodplain bylaws. And I will read that. They need to print that a little smaller. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5, maybe. Um, Continued tonight on February 24th. Uh, it was first advertised for February 3rd. 
um, at the Deerfield Town Hall, proposed amendments to the floodplain district zoning bylaw. The proposed amendments update the floodplain re regulations and clarify the uses that are permitted, prohibited, and permitted by special permit in the floodplain district. The full text of the floodplain bylaw can be found on the town's website. Uh, and paper copies can be obtained at the Deerfield Town Clerk's Office during normal business hours. Excellent. So we've um, had a couple meetings on that. Um, Chris Curtis has helped us through this and uh, drafted a lot of it. He uh, sent me an email last night saying he is unable to attend tonight. Um, okay. so, so continue it. No. This is, I mean, it's our, it's a town bylaw, and so he's just been helping us with it. Okay. So we've had well, many meetings on this, so I think we're ready to, because um, the idea would be to have, have this for town meeting. Well, I, I think one of the, the big concerns is that we don't have any new maps. So the way these bylaws are written, you know, they, they refer to different maps and stuff like that. We're going to pass a law and not know who is going to be affected. I, I think that it's yeah, a bit. There's a lot of issues, I think, John. I think we should really wait until we get new maps. There's a handout that he sent me. Um, at least we can take that. There's some extras here if anybody's interested in the fact sheet about the um, proposed. Let me take one and you can put them on that table there if you would. Thanks. Um, when are you going to get the maps? When the government gets them. So they're waiting for the federal government. So. I spoke with a surveying crew. They were out down by the Connecticut River, yep. and they were taking shots on both sides. And he said it would be years before these maps are produced. Okay. I don't think we can do anything until we know what these maps are and what they pertain, whose land and where. So the, exactly. So the question is, is, and I think this has come up, is that we have, we have some maps now. They're outdated, right? right. But so the language in here was basically yeah, so the, to use the current maps and then when they get updated it would automatically use the updated maps right, right. that was kind of the but some of the some of the language in there john well, and, and roger brought it to light is that you know if you if you move forward with this um uh, and we don't know what these maps are we, you know we have two residents here that own property in, in probably the proposed uh floodplain area uh if they want to put an addition onto one of their barns or buildings they're going to have to raise up their entire facility up you know that's just unfair and it might be unnecessary and, and that's why, until we know where we're talking about, I think it's premature to, to move forward with changing these things. Because it could be, you know, uh, and it's supposed to be helping people. This could be extremely detrimental to people. Yeah, I think existing structures should be exempt from that. You know, I, I can yeah. understand new construction, totally new construction, yeah. if the build, there was no building there. But if there's a building they want to add on to it, uh, it seemed like it was going to have to be a foot and a half higher, or two feet higher. In some places, it wouldn't even be practical. But it depends on what the new map shows. It's not just the area. It might be, you know, the right. elevation. So, yeah. And that's why I brought these pictures. I got them from Frank Morrow. And some people don't realize, like the center of town, like where Fisher's Garage, the old fire station, during the 36 flood, there was like a foot and a half to two feet of water. The fire station got flooded, fissures got flooded, uh, where the, uh, it was the Pioneer Bank or whatever, yep. Bank of America, that got flooded. It was just a resident then. There was a lot of places uh, over on Bloody Brook Drive, uh, Bloody Brook on the corner. So that's what I'm saying. People don't realize the Is impact. That 37? 36. 36. Was my house flooded, do you know? No. It was a pirate in the third, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I think we have got to look at these much before we vote, and we should probably do nothing till the new maps are produced. And in the meantime, is there any, is, what, what's the detriment to waiting, I guess? Well, they're either going to use the maps that are already here, or they're, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I don't, are, can we? I guess if you're in a floodplain, I don't really know, but right, but I, I like mean, insurance and stuff like that. But it does make a difference for insurance. Yes. Right? Right. Yeah. But they've already they've already addressed some of that already, from what I understand. 
I know the, the um, there are places that they gotta that they gotta re, you know the insurance was reduced because of. Until you know where that that map is, uh. where those floodplains are, I think you should continue as business as usual and leave it the way it is. And I guess the the, the question to the for the, the town, I mean, there's detriments to individuals' property, that, but that's to some extent their own issue. So the detriment to the town is if, if more erosion happens or, or contamination from floods when things are built places that they probably shouldn't be built and you get floods and you get think more contamination. You already have so, control over most of that. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't think it's our responsibility if they're in a floodplain and somebody's oil tank ruptures or whatever. I don't think it's a town's responsibility. No, no the, the detriment, the impact is on people in town. If, well, it, if yeah, oil gets, Yes, you know. possibly could be. So that's that's all I'm saying is. But that can happen just the tank leaking. Yeah. And then whether new construction is allowed in places that maybe it shouldn't be, shouldn't be and that, that could cause um, Erosion and other things. That but here again, if you impose so these much. rules and you find out we get the maps after the fact, now we've imposed rules for areas that aren't yeah. even going to be infected. You know, that's. Yeah. I think it's yeah. really poor to, to do that. I, I don't disagree. I also know we also had some discussion about whether whatever maps they come up with, whether they're they're great or not. Anyway, <laughs> um, but. Uh, well. All right. So are there any, is, is, so this is a public hearing. Is there anybody here who has a uh, who, who would like to see us move forward? I, should, I can ask that. And, and leave it alone. You need to know where these maps go. You can't make all these changes and then just when these maps appear, Somebody all of a sudden now you're gonna you're gonna have it all implemented. We don't even know where the changes are. You don't know where they are. So my suggestion to the town and to the, to the planning board is to leave this alone until you know where the floodplain maps are changing to. You already have rules and regulations for floodplain. Just move forward as is until you get these maps. So right now we're basing this off of the 1980 flood wave maps, is that right? Flood I think boundary so. floodway maps from July 2, 1980. Well, what what did they what did they ask you when they couldn't be here? They did want to continue it, or what did they want to do? No, he wanted us to move forward. I mean, again, it's the town's; it's not his. Right. You know, he, he's he's, yeah. he's hired as a consultant, so he knows more of the You're details. Talking about Chris. Chris, Chris right. knows more okay. of the details, but this was brought well, forward because of the town. Well, let me ask you: You say the town. Why is this bring? Why is it bring? brought forward anyways. I mean, has there been a big problem? I mean, yes, I understand with Irene, there was, it was a, a heck of a flood, and then, you know, nearly 85 years ago, there was another really bad flood. Um, but, uh, you know, I think anything that we, some of these changes that you make under, unless it's n new construction, it's not gonna change the fact if we end up with another Irene, we would have pretty much the same result as we did last time. You know, it, right. it's not a, a nice thing, but you know, you can't just put a, a board in under the Stillwater Bridge and stop it. it it's going to come. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, we've got the purpose here. And, and I mean, like you say, we've got something in the bylaws already. And this, right. is, this is expands on it a little bit. Um, so, so we're actually got an open hearing right now, right? Right. So... Is, do we want to just put people on record as not wanting it or wanting it or whatever? I mean, well, well, again, I think this is the third, second or third, third. public hearing we've had. And what happened? We had it like it was like six or seven months ago, and then we took a little. I forget what happened. We right. took a pause to. So this has been moving forward. So if if, if people don't ever want any changes, that that should have been brought up. So some people want changes. I'm not sure exactly who or. What for? I'm not, gonna, well, I'm not the spokesperson for this. But I'd be happy to table it tonight, seeing that there's not, you know, overwhelming consensus to move it forward. And then the next meeting, talk more about the, the reasons for it. 
and then we can decide about whether we wait for the maps or not. Well, or I, I, th I believe that the town received some grant money f from the state government to deal with the um, effects of future climate change, yeah. and uh, you know part of that was addressing you know the flood maps in our zoning. But how can you change the zoning if you don't know what the flood maps say? The, the other thing I know we did add a lot of things about the. Uh, special permits and so that's the other way you can regulate you can you can have these policies and then you get special permits based on each site because the maps aren't going to be perfect even even when they come out but anyway so I'm you know it sounds like no one wants to go through this and push for it tonight so mm -hmm. I think we should table it and, oh, I, or well I guess the question yeah. is I guess, I guess I'd rather prefer to continue it and then and then try to hear from some proponents of this the next time no yeah. Well, Chris Curtis is really the one that drew all this up. I don't know where he got the, the zoning changes. Yeah. He looked at other communities, but I just feel they're unfair to yeah. pre-existing structures, and it changes their whole the whole playing field on them, and it's not right. And without knowing where it's going to affect, we don't yeah. know how it's going to affect our downtown or old Deerfield, like uh, yeah. that area. The inn got flooded in Irene, so it's it's not it's not right. Yeah, there's that antique shop that's just down the road, and my son has another one up, and has a lot of so uh, out back. So what, what do you say? It's not like so. If, I, I don't get what you mean. If there's another Irene. It's if there's right. another flood, like you, like a hundred year flood, right? They call it a hundred year flood because possibly every hundred years this event could occur. It doesn't say it can't happen back to back years right. in a 500 year flood, the same thing. Right. So when's the last time we had a hundred year flood or a 500 year flood? Uh, you know, I'm not a scientist. Do you believe all this information? I don't know how they draw it up, but they claim it's accurate and it could happen every 500 years or it could happen five times in 500 years. So I don't get, so what's, and that's why we're updating this, is to make it sort of better for We're the updating it because the climate change, you're saying we're getting more rains and different things are happening. Well, it's, it's to be ready for that, whether it happens or not. It's, it's about preparation, right? You don't know um, where Yeah. No, 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 I get that. I'm trying and to I'm figure not out saying, what I'm not, I'm not, not saying that the, the information they're going to provide us is inaccurate, but... Yeah. You know, I'm just telling you what I know. And when's the last time you've seen, I, I grew up by the Connecticut River, and I haven't seen high water there my whole lifetime, practically. In 88, it came up pretty high, but I've never seen any of the floods. Like, I did a little research looking at pictures and stuff, and that hasn't happened. So maybe they put more flood control in. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I mean, we could, we, we could postpone it till the next meeting and yeah. then say, and I get rid of it or, yeah. or do whatever uh -huh. at the next meeting. I mean. Right. Um, and I also don't know, well, I think it's the maps, but also, um, do, we, do we need a, uh, on our table of uses, do we need to have some clarification about, because it has uses by special permit, and then I, others it, by right and others not by right. So I don't, and I don't, that's not included in here either, I don't think. Well, I think there needs to be a lot more discussion about you know, this whole thing in general, John. I mean, I mean the, the academy just put up an $85 million building in a floodplain, you know, and if, if they're, I'm not saying they're not concerned, but I mean, you, you, there's one thing to be prepared, but there's another thing yeah, yeah, yeah. to, yeah. you know, Just to let you All know, right. if we do have another bad flood, I do have a boat at my house. You can come over. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, we could we could boat up to Richardson's on the next storm. Last so All, right. All right. So, um, do I have a motion to continue Should this till also this same April? I, I make a motion to continue the uh, public hearing on the proposed amendments to town flood floodplain bylaws until our April sixth meeting. I'll second it. Okay. Well, we can still have discussion. Yeah, so we have a motion in a second, yeah. and then we can take comment. Yeah. No, you can. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're going to have Jay come back on the 6th and do the same thing over again? Because, you know, um, it's going to affect the value of his land and everything else and the farmland and all that. And 
So are you just going to keep continuing it and he's going to have to keep coming back or say we have to keep coming because we live along the river um, at some point? Don't, you know, he doesn't want to not be here when you make a decision. So I guess that's my question. Well, there's different ways to provide input. So written input is helpful. And then, you know, that's why tonight, if you want to say a few more things, we can record that as well. Okay. Um, but I obviously you see these right. questions here. But we, we kind of we just feel like tonight we we need a little bit here from the where this is coming from and there are I think there are some good things in here that we even talked about um, in previous months so there could be that we might still want to do it but make some changes to it and but that map issue is a big one. Why don't we reach out to whoever pushed this forward and, and have them come here and explain you know why yeah. the change. Um, because and I think that's partly what he's, what's in this. Um, and and, and again, this is, you know, the Connecticut River is long. We're only one of the many towns on it. And the Deerfield, everybody's, a lot of people on the Deerfield. So it would be good to see what other towns are doing, too. Um, you know, we're, we're not that different than so many other towns. So are, right. we, we have are, we going to, are we going to meet March 16th for our next meeting? Is that correct? Is that what I saw? But... We have to decide that. But yes, I, I believe so. I hope so. Oh, we <laughs> should put that down here. I mean, if we're going to do it in March, we should have that date but even this this fact sheet is very subjective because it says you know Deerfield's existing floodplain zoning is outdated and it does not adequately protect the town's floodplain area I disagree I mean we have a lot of lo low-lying area along the Deerfield River and I mean that's mother mother nature's way of it's got a place for the water to go well that, you know and we and want to maintain so, that I think yeah, yeah. Right, you know. right but on the other hand you can't tell a farmer he can't uh, right, you know, put up a barn in this field right. or whatever, you know. So I, I just. All right. All right. Okay. So, uh, there's a motion and a second. We have a. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, we got to get the date though. April sixth. April sixth. Is it no? You didn't get it. You're going to go to April. April or you're going to March. April sixth. That was the motion. April sixth. Write it down. Okay, all right, I didn't, I didn't get that. To so coincide far. with the other one we said. Yes. All right, okay, that's fine. April 6th. What time for that so people will know? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. All of them at 7? Well, that's what you usually do. Schedule them all at okay, 7. Okay, it it okay. might be 10 minutes, it might be half yeah. hour, but it, yeah. it, it, neither yeah. of them should be that. Well, that other one shouldn't be that long. So. All those, did you get that as 400? Zero, zero? Is that what it is? Yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. 400. Zero, zero. Zero. Okay. If you agreed. Yep. Um, okay. We should have done um, an attendance thing for public hearings we're supposed to do. I don't, I don't have the whole folder. Oh, no, there's a bunch. Yeah, there's a bunch. I didn't bring one with me tonight, no. I can get some paper out of the copier. Yes, there's none in the in the stuff there, huh? I'll go get some paper. And if we just pass around and people sign. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Paul, I got it. Got it. Okay. Because actually, it's got a. Um, Something stiff. Huh? Uh, I just put it behind against. this thing. What's that? Oh, that's good. That'll do. Yeah. And I think if, if you all just sign, even though it's three public hearings, you're here for all of them. So if you can just sign your name, that'd be great. Um, and you've got people who spoke name, Paul, in your minutes to you or not? Uh, we shot John. Jay I mean, Jay Savage, Jay Savage just did a, his own spoke. All right. And Stephen and Kathy Nolan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that's that's the kind of thing that um, Sue can't tell from the yeah <laughs> from okay. the recording. So. And then we have the. Um, did you get the four pager? Is it four pager? Jay, did you get the four page one? No, I'd like. The, um, I don't. It's it's actually the. It hasn't changed. It's, this is still dated though. 
All right, two down. All right, next up is the continuation of a public hearing for proposed marijuana bylaws, and I'll read, I'll read that. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5, uh, starting on Monday, February 3rd, continued to Monday, today, Monday 20, the 24th, 2020, at the Deerfield Town Hall, South Deerfield, on a proposed zoning bylaw proposed by Gorgridge, someone's going to help me with that, LLC. The text of said document can be inspected at the Town Hall. The proposal would consolidate now separate bylaws for medical and non-medical marijuana operations, authorized product manufacturing in the RA district on parcels of five acres or more, where co-located with a licensed cultivation operation, and make certain other clarifying amendments. The purpose of this public hearing is to provide interested parties with the appropriate, uh, with the opportunity to comment on the reference changes. So this was posted properly. We held, uh, we opened the public hearing on February 3rd and um, have continued it till tonight. And uh, does everybody planning board have copies of it? Do you have new ones that are laid out? I still have the original ones. Do you know who this is from? Is this All right. So, would anybody like to comment on this? Hello, oh, Attorney Evans. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Richard Evans, and I represent Go Grizz uh, Inc. or LLC. The uh, say it for me, Go Go Grizz. So I've spelt it a couple different ways. Go Grizz. Go G O G R I Z. Go Grizz. Okay, there's no R. In the no R. Okay. No R. There. No, no first R. Okay. Thanks. Well, there's one R. Right. Is it such? So yeah. G O G R. Uh, Go Grizz is the is the owner of the of the facility at 198 Mill Village Road. And uh, is the uh, proponent of this of this uh, uh, bylaw change. Uh, I'm, I'm accompanied tonight by other members of, of the, the team. Oh, John, are our speakers on in here? Yeah, hey. I guess if you speak right into it, you got to get close. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, can you can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm accompanied tonight by Ali Kirkpatrick and Blake Gilmore from our team, and. Well, two other members were here, but I don't know where they went, but uh, Martin Coronado and uh, John Lathrop. Um, let me just take a minute, if I could, to review why we're here, what this proposal is about. I touched on this last time. Let me just briefly address that point. And then you may recall at, last, at our last uh, public hearing on this, of the, the, when you opened the public hearing, you asked me to, uh, or invited me to uh, comment on the changes between uh, this proposal and the planning board's proposal. Mm -hmm. And I'm prepared to do that tonight if, if, if you'd like to do that. So <clears throat> um, just to review, as you know, for the last uh, two years or so, I've sat in this room through uh, multiple meetings of this board. Uh, for the first year, when you uh, uh, struggled to draft uh, section 4660 of the, the uh, zoning bylaw, which is the adult uh, marijuana section, uh, not to be confused with 4650, which is the medical marijuana section. And, uh, and then for the second year, I, I, as you know, we went through a long protracted process of seeking a, a, a special permit for uh, cultivation uh, at that site. Uh, since then, the uh, uh, client has uh, sought as asking the town to consider a, 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 a rezoning there so that they can do what is technically referred to as product manufacture or called in this draft bylaw uh, product preparation uh, within the existing footprint 
and, and, and as you know, that the, this proposal allows for product preparation on sites of five acres or more when co-located with a licensed cultivator in the um, RA district. Um, the, the, uh, during the course of those two years that, that I, I sat here, um, you, you expressed many times uh, the, the, the view that, that you wanted to rewrite this bylaw. I knew that. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to consolidate the medical and the non-medical, which I totally agree with. It's a great idea. No reason to have two of them. Uh, you wanted to make a few other tweaks to it, a few other corrections, which you know that, that came up over the course of those hearings, a few small errors. So it occurred to me that um, I was actually in a good position to, to do that because I was familiar with it. I had the experience of sitting here. I know the, the, the law reasonably well. I've got lots of experience writing bylaws and statutes and bills and such. Um, so <clears throat> believing that I was natural to do that, my client was willing to pay me for doing that to save the town a lot of money. And, and I remember sitting here for hours and hours and hours. The town council was here, and I can't imagine what that cost the town. Um, but but uh, so I, I undertook to draft a bylaw, which I thought was the bylaw you would want to write. That's really where I was going with this. I drafted a bylaw that I thought was exactly what, well, 99% at least, which I thought you would want. Now, I know that you're not keen on doing product preparation in RA. I know that. But the rest of the bylaw is a very simple tweak to the existing. It consolidates medical and non-medical. Mm -hmm. It makes that one change, as I mentioned, about product preparation. And, and it corrects the 2,000-foot buffer thing between retails. It clarifies the the impervious uh, surface area, and I think that was about it. May have been a typo, one or two that we corrected. But it's a very modest, very modest change substantively from what you have now. Uh, I, I call it a modest recomposition. Um, and that is really, uh, that sums up the, uh, the proposal and why we're here. Now, I would ask the board to keep in mind <clears throat> that, uh, of course, this is uh, for determination by the voters of Deerfield, not, not the planning board. Right. So, so uh, it's, it's essential that this get to the warrant. The warrant closes uh, March 27th, I believe, or 26th. So I ask you to close this public hearing tonight after you've heard from everybody and move it on to, uh, to the floor of town meeting. And I think that it would go back from here. We'd go to the select board, and they'd put it on the uh, on the warrant. But that's that's my request. Um, so so to sum up, the the landowner proposal, the Go Grizz proposal, is really to maintain the status quo substantively, make a few corrections, with the only substantive change being the allowance of uh, product manufacture uh, in the RA district on large parcels when co-located. Otherwise, it's a modest uh, a rewrite of uh, and condensation of what you have now. So that's why we have uh, proposed. And the reason that I, that I drafted an uh, 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 entire section of the bylaw instead of just a line or two, which ordinarily you'd see, uh, is because I knew that you, were gonna re you wanted to rewrite the bylaws. Uh, and uh, if I had just drafted a little tweak to the existing bylaws, by the time it got to town meeting, it'd probably be obsolete because you'd be, be looking at a whole new bylaw. So it seemed to make a lot of sense to do it this way, and that's why I did it. So having said that, uh, you asked me to make a few comments about the differences between our proposal and yours, and I don't know how much detail you want me to go into. Uh, I'll just, just say, um, make a couple of points, um, and that is substantively, and both, both in substance and in form, your bylaws is substantially different from what we have now, uh, the bylaws. With regard to uh, the uh, land use policy that's, that's reflected in your bylaw, uh, ours is, a, is very modest and yours is substantial and uh, insofar that it's, I think it's much more restrictive than ours and more restrictive than the current bylaw and, and more ambitious. And uh, I say ambitious, because uh, if you look at the first paragraph, you undertake to uh, 
um, protect the uh, health, safety, general well-being of the public, as well as legally authorized adult customers seeking to legally purchase marijuana for their own use. I think that's very generous of you to want to protect <laughs> the health of adult consumer, adult marijuana consumers, but I don't think that's the province of zoning. I think that's the province of uh, the, the Board of Health, if anyone. And uh, I would urge you to maybe re reconsider that, uh, that, that proposal, that aim. Um, the, uh, obviously, your, your, your proposal is much more restrictive than ours insofar as it, that, that it eliminates the RA district for cultivation altogether and eliminates the EP or EPD district altogether for any marijuana uses. Um, your, unlike our proposal, yours perpetuates the distinction between medical and non-medical marijuana. If you do a, do a word search on your proposal, you'll find the word medical shows up 10 or 11 times. Treatment as a mar medical marijuana treatment center shows up five times. Uh, RMD registered marijuana dispensary, which is a retail store for medical marijuana, that shows up four or five times. Um, I mean, medical is all through. You, you have not eliminated the distinction between medical and non-medical marijuana. And I think you should. That's a, a big difference. Mine does. Uh, I guess ours does. Um, and really, it makes no, it doesn't make sense, I think, to, to, to maintain the uh, distinction because the plant itself, there's no difference between a medical marijuana plant and a non-medical marijuana plant, nor does it make any sense to distinguish between who is doing the cultivating or the processing or whatever, as opposed to the, the uh, 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 process itself. What, I, what I'm trying to say here is that the, a zoning law is about controlling and regulating uses of land. We all know that, that's where we start. Well, if you look closely at your bylaw, it doesn't control uses of land, it controls users of land. And if you look at the table of use regulations, and I've pointed this out several times to the board. So I, I think you should be listing uses of land, not users of land. Now, one reason your, your, your um, certainly your uh, uh, proposal is much longer, it's twice as long as ours, it's 12 pages long. And I think that's because it contains a lot of unnecessary and duplicitous uh, um, uh, material that really need not be in there at all. But um, if you look, look under the, the, uh, one of the uses that you list there in the table is micro business. Well, a micro business, and you have a definition of a micro business in the definition sections. A micro business is a marijuana licensee uh, uh, entity that's licensed to do cultivation and, and product manufacture on a small scale. That's what a micro business is. Well, you list micro business as a use, as a use, uh, but it's, micro business is not a use, it's an entity. Cultivation is the use. And there's no difference between the way a micro business cultivates marijuana and an ordinary cultivator cultivates marijuana. So I don't, it makes no sense, no sense to maintain that, that distinction. I would suggest the table of use regulations ought to focus on uses. But be that as it is. So um, yours really discourages entry into the business. It really makes it much harder for anyone to get into the business. Uh, um, I mean, I don't know how much detail, but, but, but uh, for, for example, you, you've, um, you've uh, provided that an uh, uh, applicant for a special permit is required to submit a copy of its provisional license from the CCC. Well, you can't get a special permit unless you a, a, a provisional license unless you've, you're okay in terms of the, 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 the land where you propose to operate. In this case, you need a special permit. Uh, so that means no one's going to operate. But also, also in another section, line, well, Line 389, but let's see. Excuse me. 
Sorry, one, line 189, it's the top of page six of your, of your, uh, of, uh, your proposal. It says, no marijuana establishment may commence operation or apply yeah, for a building permit prior to its receipt of all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to a final license for, yeah, final license from the CCC. Well, you can't get a final license without having done your build out. Everybody knows that. So, and you can't do a build out without getting a building permit. So there's a catch 22 here, another catch 22 that you've built into this. And I, I don't know if it was intentional. I mean, if, if you want to discourage people from getting into the business in Deerfield, then this is a good way to do it. But um, I, I, that really needs to be rethought. Now, in terms of, of form, I've just been talking about substance, but in terms of form, uh, as I mentioned, yours is twice as long, 12 pages, and contains a lot of unnecessary and duplicitous and, and uh, uh, superfluous verbiage, in, in my view. Uh, I've tried to make ours as short and concise and succinct as possible, making it only as uh, long as it has to be and as short as it can be. That's the way I approach all drafting. And uh, yours uh, doesn't adopt that, <laughs> that mode. Um, yours is also, I think, unnecessarily complicated, a lot more complicated than ours, insofar at least as you create two new marijuana overlay districts. Now, and, and they're fragmented. These are not just ordinary overlay districts that we're used to see in zoning for like a central business district, you know, where, where you impose a, a new set of zoning rules over a, a various districts that, that, are, that are in a single geographical area. That's, that's why we have overlay districts in the first place. But you've kind of changed that. You've created two overlay districts and you've fragmented them spread them around town. You've got the south, uh, like for example, the uh, uh, portion, portion of the commercial district is in your overlay, but another part of the commercial district is not in your overlay. And that raises the question of, well, if, if a product manufacturer or processing is suitable in a commercial district, well, why, is it, why isn't it suitable in an entire commercial district? Why is it suitable only in the south commercial district, but not in the central commercial district, for example? And that's a question that I think will come up and, uh, and uh, would, would suggest you consider. Uh, finally, let me just say that another big difference between your proposal and ours, in, in a general sense, is uh, the starting place. Uh, ours starts with the experience of having, having seen what's happened in Deerfield, not only in Deerfield, but also around the state. I mean. It's been four years since, since uh, the voters of Deerfield and the statewide said yes to legalization in Massachusetts. Uh, and so it's not like we don't know what the impact has been. Uh, however, in your opening paragraph, uh, you say it's recognized that the nature of the substance cultivated process or sold by establishments may have objectionable operational characteristics. Um, well, may. Gosh, it's been four years. You should, you know, if anybody's paying attention, knows what the, what the, the, op the characteristics, the operational characteristics of marijuana business is. You know, we, we, we saw, um, bottom line is, we saw traffic jams in Northampton on opening day a couple of years ago. But besides that, the sky doesn't seem to have fallen anywhere. And the worst complaints we've heard anywhere has been about, about odor. Um, but, uh, I would suggest that a, a beginning place would be to acknowledge that this is not a brand new thing. Many cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth have open and operating medical, uh, I don't mean medical, marijuana establishments. And they, we can learn from this. And I don't think we should premise a bylaw on an uncertain fear. And I think that's what you've done by, by stating it this way. Um, so those are my general comments about uh, the differences between your proposal and mine. I would ask that you give, give, give us your assurances that this will, ours will move on to town meeting, and not just get bogged down here. I'm asking you to close the, town, the public area tonight after you've heard from everybody, and then to uh, take whatever action you want on it, 
and then send it back to the uh, select board to put on the uh, warrant for town meeting. And, and yours will probably be the same way, and that's fine. I think, it'd be, I think it's a good thing. The voters will have a good choice between, uh, between the two. Um, so with that, uh, any questions? Well, my feedback is I, I agree with a lot of the things that you said, and especially how long this is. Um, I, I, don't, I don't agree with a lot of the contents in either of the agreements. <clears throat> and I think because of the way this board is made up, and by that I mean we're all volunteers and we don't have a lot of time, I think the only way that we're going to get a very good outcome is if Mr. Evans came back again and we had our lawyer here and Chris so we can go item by item and when it says things like this about protecting the public, we can scrap that. It's going to take, it's going to be a long process, but if we don't spend the time, we're going to end up with what we got. Just, you know, it's going to work for some people, not work for other people, and, you know, it's, it's not going to be beneficial to the community. Well, uh, your, your public hearing on, on, on yours is scheduled <clears throat> for March 9th. I, I plan to be here that night. I'm happy to engage in that process that night. But please don't keep hours open. I, I don't want to hold hours up for mm -hmm. that. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be here. Well, for that. I, I, happy I, to do that. I, I think that there's going to be a blending of maybe both of them. Um, but I, you know, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I hope there can be. As you know, I have held myself open to that no, possibility and, and, and for months, and I'm I continue. Sure. I, I welcome the opportunity to sit down with you right. and discuss the possibility of, of, of uh, melding the two together and coming up with a a compromise that everybody's happy with. And the, I'm, I remain available to do that. Some of the conversations that we had with Chris in the past, <clears throat> his drafting this, is he's went through bylaws from many different communities and, and kind of melted them together to, because different communities had different situations. You know, I, but, you know, <clears throat> I need more, I feel I need more information than just that for an, uh, a reason. You know, why, does it, why is this like this and why is that like that? You know, and a lot of times when I read through a lot of this, I had to read it a couple of times because it's like, I understand what it says, but what's it mean? You know, and, that, and that's kind of what you're, you're getting at with a lot of these things. But uh, I, I don't know. How do you feel about putting two separate proposals in front of the town meeting? I, I think that's the direction we're heading. Um, and, uh, and again, as a someone who a proponent who writes it and submits it, and you know he has a right for us to move it along, as he says. Um, I think part of it, whether we, a planning board, you know, makes a recommendation about it, is a different story. I think we can have, we can make a re recommendation. We cannot make a recommendation. We can make a negative recommendation. So that that's what we can do. But um, I don't I don't think we want to stop stop it from moving forward. It started at the select board, you know, we'd go back to the select board and they can determine. I don't know if they have other other protocol they have to do uh, before putting it on the warrant. But. So are you suggesting that we just say, okay, we, we held a public hearing on it. Um, you know, we don't, and we're just pushing it back to you. What if they're, that's what do we think of it? Well, we didn't have an opportunity. I mean, we wanted to compare the both, but we just pushing it back to you and I don't know. Well, no, I think I think we should make some kind of statement about it. And I, I thought I thought we have some. I mean, we do have some things we've talked about that that why why we wanted to have another one. And I, I think some of the things you pointed out tonight are great, and and um, those are things I remember that one about. Um, that we want to see the final license from the CCC before we'll give you a permit, and but they want to see the permit before they'll give you the license. Right, can't do that. And those are things that, um, you know, I have to, the, the one thing I disagree is it is still a new business. You can say it's been around for four years, but not, nothing's open in Deerfield yet. So it's, it's, it's a new business for yeah, us. But not plenty of other tests. And, and there's plenty of things like that. How, how, you know, unless someone with experience tells us that this whole permit thing is a, a little shuffle. We wouldn't know that. It, it makes sense to us because in most of the things, people don't get, you know, people don't get a building permit until everything else is in order. This is a different situation, but we don't necessarily know that until now, until you tell us. So that, so now, 
you know, you, you know, if what you said is true, then that that makes it so this thing is. Right, but it, it, it could be one sentence long thing because it means no one can. Have, but it, it's can do anybody a who comes, marijuana. anyone that comes uh, t to this community or any community, it's a big risk on their behalf because they have to go through an awful lot, spend mm -hmm. an awful lot. Exactly. There's a big investment. To, to, to get to that point, and then they send their application off to the state with no guarantee that they're going to get the license. Right, right. You know. Yeah. So. so those, so there's definitely some changes in in, in ours. Um, and the uh, the placement, the the uh, overlay district was a was a big issue. Um, and and even though it looks a little strange on the map, it's it's kind of it's what we all talked about is we don't, you know, we want it in certain places along five and 10, not yeah, I, out all of them. I think fragmenting overlays this district so. is not illegal. I want to make that clear. Yeah. I think it runs contrary to zoning practice, but it's not illegal. You're, you're free to do that. And again, if this was just general retail, we have our general retail zones are, are much more consistent. They're not fragmented. But this is a special thing that people still have a lot of questions on. So being fragmented is OK in that case, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. you see? Um, and then I think the biggest issue that we've talked about is this, the manufacturing. Um, that that's, that's the part that I could not recommend to town meeting since I've heard from so many people uh, over the past four years you know, there was a there was a lot of people who didn't want even cultivation in RA, and and I think now that we have we have learned some things, and so now we're saying no more cultivation in RA and no more you know no manufacturing in RA. That seems to be the biggest difference. So, so at this point, I would say you know we can move this forward, but it, it would not get a recommendation from me. Um, so we, that's something we could vote on. I I would like to hang on to it for a while. And you know, see if we can't get ours. And then we can figure out which ones which, we want. To, well, how I, we want. To I think we can still it. do that we, we for, can. Our March, for our for the March 16th one, and then let this one go on its own. And if by the time it gets to town meeting, everybody's happy with one, then that that can come out at town meeting. I guess is what I want to say. But I think I, by I agree with that. Stopping this and you know, I'm just not delaying saying stopping it, it, just holding on and send them both together. If they both you mean, you, if they you both just want to send one, but I'm not sure. They, no, 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 no. Two. two. I almost think we should just send one. I think we should just send one. We should just take it. Both well, of them, either both of them go in or, or you know. Well, why don't we send one with our recommendation and one without our recommendation? Right. Well, that can happen, but, yeah, yeah. you know, obviously they're alike in some ways, but obviously I think everybody in the community or most everybody, they don't want to see it in the IRA district. Right. And that's the biggest stumbling right. block right there. So, and, and I, you know, if it's 99% or 50% or the same, I think you're right. A lot of it is the same, but that's, that's the key one about, about, the, about the overlay district and then the RA district. And I don't think anybody wants to see manufacturing process, whatever you want to call it, yeah. in the RA district. And, I, you know, I'm not going to say we made a mistake four years ago, but some people would, would say that, and, but whatever, we did it, and now we're learning from it, and now we're going to make changes. So as we have the right to, a landowner has the right to propose a change in zoning, which we've done right. under Section 5 of Chapter 48, right. which is the same provision that you cited in the earlier hearings. Right. And that provides that, that, a, that a proposal go to the select board. They send it to the planning board. Planning board holds a public hearing, closes the public hearing, and then may issue recommendations, may make a report of recommendation, but it, it's got to go. It's got to mm -hmm. keep moving along. And that's all I'm asking you just now. I'm ask, asking you to endorse it, to propose it, to, to approve it. I'm just asking you to keep it moving. Out and not, don't bog us down with yours. Yeah. Yours may be good. Yours may be the way to go. But don't put us in the same same uh, I hear you. with, with yours. That's Can all I ask you a question? What, what happened to Sun's Mass? Sun's Mass is the operator of the facility at 198 Mill Village Road. Go Grizz is the owner of the land, the landlord. The statute provides that the landowner's got a the proposal needs to come from the landowner. So that's okay. that's the only difference. So Sun's Mass is still sure. The, Sun's the Mass operate. is alive and well. They're the ones that are operating. Yes. Okay. 
So I'd like to public hearing if we can open it up. Anybody else have comments, questions? Yes, you want to come up to the to the mic here and. Uh, Thank you, Attorney Evans. Kathy Melnick, Mill Village Road, I'm a butter. And I have a, just some concerns about the RA district and the manufacturing. And I think Kippy just pointed out who actually owns this thing. I, if I'm not mistaken, I read in these bylaws somewhere that you, know, you have so long that you have the permit. I may be misunderstanding this. But this is what's going to happen at town meeting when we have to go and decide which is the right one because, I mean, I'm confused. I don't know what Chapter 179 and, you know, the Massachusetts general laws, and you're going to get so bogged down in town meeting with two separate ones that it's just going to go on forever. And I don't know how many times you've been to our town meetings, but they go quite long. Um, I mean, to this company, we've already made the concession to the APR land, and now they're in um, residential agriculture. The tanks of gas, they've already reduced the size. So far, there's nothing going on there except for Pioneer Gardens moved out. They've moved in. I don't see anything else happening there. The two houses are vacant. Um, the ownership has always been an issue for me, and it always comes up at every, every meeting. Um, and I think at one of the meetings when I watched, I wasn't here, um, but I watched it on TV twice to make sure what I was talking about, take my notes. And one of the things was the, um, you know, they've been there. I don't know what they pay for taxes and everything else. They paid $3 million for buildings or the site. And I know, because we have the digester next door, I mean, that shows up on our taxes. I don't, you know, I haven't gone in and looked at theirs. And what was the thing about the manufacturing agriculture? What was your question? You're changing agriculture, residential, and you're letting manufacturing come in. So I don't know how many times this is, does this set precedent? on future, you know, you're not, you're manufacturing, so there's more traffic and there's a slew of things that can change the whole landscape of the area. And some of the other thing, I know at that meeting um, last, last time, the comp another company was looking at the um, Plain Road facility. They came with a, I think it was Sparta, came with a, a recommendation, or at least a, they were kind of feeling you out about how you felt about this, and that was in a commercial district. And it was a site that they were gonna buy and build and then rent the land out. And it's kind of the same thing. Hmm. I look at it as a townsperson, that this is the same thing that's happening next to us, that they're doing it over here, but at least it's in a commercial district. Hmm. And, um, it was a lot of a lot of money that was going to change hands for that other one. This one, I don't know what it's all going to be about, but I just, I guess, like, you know, we've given them a lot of concessions, and so far they still haven't opened, and I don't know where they are in their um, permitting process for the state if they actually have the permit, you know. And so if they decide they're going to move out, what happens to that property? Where is it going to go? What's going to happen to it if they don't get this manufacturing? Because you know darn well they're going to throw that at us. And you know, what's the town going to do? We have all this, you know, three, who's going to buy $3 million property? Who's going to go back to it? And you have two houses that are going downhill because nobody's in them. Um, it's just a bad situation and I think that the manufacturing is going to make it even worse and if you do two sets of bylaws to the town uh, it's just going to you know like I said I'm there I've been following it and there's a lot of people that are not going to understand what's going on mm -hmm. so that's it thanks Any questions of me? yeah thanks yep.
Anybody else? Sure. Hi. Good evening. I'm Blake Gilmore with Harvest, former resident of the town. <coughs> and, um, basically, who's what, Harvest? Pardon? Who's Harvest? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Sons Mass. <laughs> Another name. <laughs> we want to get our name straight here. Exactly. Um, and the thing that was brought up about the facility, first of all, we do not have the uh, license at this time. We're still waiting. Um, so that's why the business isn't going at this time. But on a security standpoint, I actually stepped in. And one of the things that uh, I suggested that they do with this thing is if we were going to try to do manufacturing is do it within the confines of the uh, greenhouses themselves. And that if we keep it in one location, the security is going to be that much more efficient. So in other words, if we have everything on site, everything gets done, and then it gets shipped out, we're not selling anything in the town of Deerfield. It's all wholesale and it's going out of the town. But if we have to ship to another location, and then we have to t do it from that point, then I'm, I'm concerned about the transport from one location to another and then from that location out to the public and that sort of thing. So that was my reasoning as far as, as uh, on the security standpoint of what was going on. And obviously the, the, um, uh, the company itself makes the decisions. I don't make the decisions for them. Um, so just so that you know that there was a there was a reason behind what we were doing with this, so. Okay, thanks. Thanks. All right, do we think we need more information or can we close the uh, public? I no, if anybody else wants to speak. Seeing none. Else. None. We have a motion to close the? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Excuse me. On. Ah. I'll get to it. The proposed. <laughs> on the proposed uh, marijuana bylaws uh, from Attorney Richard Evans on behalf of Grogris at 198 Mill Village Road. I'll second it. Second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so thank you very much for everybody's input. Um, close the public hearing on that. So the next step would be to um, make a recommendation or not to the select board and or the town meeting. Um, as, as we said, we got this from the select board, asked us to hold the public hearing on it, so then I guess I would, I would say we give a recommendation back to the select board and let them decide whether it goes on the warrant or not. Does that make sense? Well, we should be telling them, we should be directing them what we think we should do with it. Right, so I, I, would, move, I would make a motion that we, the, the planning board, not recommend this, uh, this bylaw, <coughs> proposed bylaw. Well, uh, we haven't made it yet, but I'm just, we're, yeah. We're just trying to figure out what we would do, but I discuss. said I would, I would make a motion that we not recommend this, this bylaw. Right. And maybe we could make the recommendation that we just present one, blend the two together and... Oh, can't. That's, yeah, it depends on what, what the selectmen do, though. I well, mean, we, we don't. But I agree, right. we could let them know that we're having another public hearing on the March 16th for another one, and that that's, um, you know, we, we think that's the one that we're going to recommend, so... Um, and it will incorporate, and it already has incorporated uh, some of this, by the way. Chris said he read, he read the one that we looked at tonight and put some of it into it along with some from other towns and from the states. Yeah, I remember. But, but there, are some, there are some modifications I think we, we can make based on some of Are we going to be able to get Chris back here at our next meeting and, and then we can go, go through this? Yeah, and actually there could be a, uh, we could do like, like Pat Smith used to do in between meetings, she could do a red line you know, with some corrections so that the next one, we already, we can see them right there. You can see the changes made and that'd be really helpful. So I would ask for that, you know? Yeah. So I'll make a motion. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking about how, uh, do you want to just make a motion 
if someone makes a motion, do you want to do it just to not recommend this, or do you want to go into more detail? Why? Good point. Um, because yeah, it's one thing, because if, yeah. if they get it, they, the, if they have a very little uh, information, yeah. they say, well, what is it, what, what were they thinking or not thinking, or what are they planning, not planning, yeah. and stuff like that. So I would say that the, the two major reasons, one is um, that, that this one would allow for uh, manufacturing co-located with cultivation, right. which is not what ours says, and that we believe we need to restrict um, any marijuana establishment to the two overlay districts and not to the uh, RA. RA. So those are the two major differences. Okay. And you're right, I think that whether it's to the select board who hears that in or if it does end up going to a town meeting, that should be in writing along with it or certainly presented to people. If those, if those are the two main uh, reasons, I think that would be extremely beneficial at town meeting because yeah. like Kathy said yeah. <laughs> the debate on this will go on for nights um, so what are the two items so I can write them down here correctly so the ones the two major items that we don't why we don't want to recommend this is um, we do not want to allow manufacturing in the RA and district. or preparation whatever it's termed in in the RA district whether it's co-located or not with cultivation in you and don't want manufacturing in what district again? RA. 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 Did I know, but I just got to write this down correctly here. Yep. yep. RA district. It's been it's been a month since we well, not several weeks. What, there was a difference in language. What was called manufacturing and processing. Uh, I, Changes every time we hear it. Well, no, I. I yeah. I don't remember where well, there's somewhere in the definition. Marijuana product manufacturer, an entity licensed to obtain, manufacture, process, process. and package okay. cannabis. So it uses a lot of the different words, but it's okay. here we call it in our definitions it's man Manu marijuana product manufacturing. manufacturing. Okay. Whereas okay. whereas that, processing only, can also be only is that the only copy you've got there? I mean, could you just yeah. highlight that and just yeah, well, I could you take it and yeah. copy it and I'll give it back to you? It's processing can be drying and curing. That's part of cultivation if you use it that way. The other way is but that's that. taking it to the next step. Right. Yeah. This is from the 130, uh, the January I 30th. I don't have that here to. I have it, but I'm, I'm just trying to see. Cultivators. If you want to look at some manufacturing, because up here it talks about marijuana process. Okay, processing. So this is that's okay, but product <coughs> manufacturing. So we don't want. So if you want to, you want okay, to so it so what do you want? This this can I mark this up? Uh, not too much. I want to be able to read it. <laughs> okay. You said you want something to copy. So yeah, copy. I want I want to get uh, I don't I got to copy the whole thing out here. Yeah. Um, okay. Make yeah, a copy, I, can, Paul. I can give you this one. Or, okay. or I can make a copy. I'll, I'll, I'll make a copy of this. For you All right, that would be good. Because I did some underlining this. Right. And so it's back in process. And then so that's the first. Or did, so you're going to make a copy then of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll get it from you then. Right. So we're all set. So that's the one reason. The second yep. reason is that we want to restrict um, any marijuana establishment. So that's retail cultivation mar uh, to the overlay districts and not allow it in our area. Okay. Restrict marijuana process. All marijuana establishments. All marijuana to what now? To, to an overlay. To, to, to overlay districts. Not in the RA. Not in RA. Okay. All right. So, uh, did we do the motion? No. Um, I don't know if I can remember all that. Okay. So, um, I make a motion that we uh, move um, Attorney Evans' um, amendment or amendments to the marijuana bylaws back to the select board and not recommend it primarily for the reasons that we do not uh, think that the marijuana manufacturing process should be in the RA district and that we also want to restrict any marijuana establishment in the RA district and move it to the overlay <coughs> districts. These two are here. <coughs> be proposed. Okay. So okay? So I got it moved so far, but have we seconded it? Anybody want to second? 
Well, I was just wondering, do you want to <coughs> even go as far as saying that we don't even think it should be presented at town meeting? Well, that's, it's not our decision. Well, I, I would, it is and it is I, I would actually make it separate. I was going to do that. I'd say, I think we do this vote, and then I would add a separate note to the select board saying that on March 16th, we're going to we're going look to at work. another proposal uh, that we think should go to town meeting. With our approval. With our approval. With our recommendation. So let's get this movement, this method. Because if, if the select board chooses not to put it on, uh, they would just have to go get a petition and have enough signatures and yeah, they could present right. it. That's the other thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so who's seconding it? I'll second that. Okay. All right. And then I think in, in the discussion, <coughs> we can say, let's put in the discussion that um, on March 16th, we're going to try to finalize another proposal that we do want to go to town meeting. You want this part of this motion or after no, we get this motion? No, done? just discussion about the, in the motion, I guess so. Okay. So I think, can we make it a third item here that says? Yeah, actually. Um, said, said we're. we're uh, yeah, makes sense. We're not done with or we'll it it, will be it'll, it'll come up with on three nine um 319 16 sorry 16 no yeah, 316 right. <laughs> yeah 16. 16. I, I want to see sue's note uh minutes compared to paul's on this one <laughs> yeah yeah well that's what's good about it yeah yeah right uh, okay all right all those in favor Aye. 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 Oppose. Abstain. And and we got that. Okay. Zero zero. And we are going to do this on the sixteenth of March. March sixteenth. March sixteenth. And and originally we had said March 9th, but we didn't get the public notice out. It has to get out two weeks in advance, so it's uh, now going to be the 16th, which I believe still gives us time to get it. Well, it's like board can still get it on the warrant. Can you get in touch with Chris to make sure that he can be yeah. there? Yeah, he was on Did, some emails about this today, so hopefully he saw that. We didn't have uh, our town council to uh, review any of this, did we? No, so we could do that over the next couple of weeks to have them look at the proposal. Okay. Um, and and again, I want to thank. Uh, we'll put this in the record. Thank uh, Attorney Evans for yeah. pointing out some of the things in our. In the other one, the comparison was helpful, and I think you're right. There are a lot of things here. A lot of can... improvements we can make. Um, so do I understand that the public hearing on the March 9th is canceled? Yes. yes. Yeah. And there's going to be. So it's been re-advertised for. It's it's going to go in this week now, um, and that was just an administrative oversight. We'll call it. Sorry about that. Messes with plans. In so, March sixteenth meeting is seven o'clock. So at, the, at this point, I think that March sixteenth will be our March meeting because the first yes. Monday we can't do it right. for various reasons. That's why we moved it. But now. The, the only I agenda item is this one, so the 16th will be our March meeting, as long as nothing else. At 7. At 7. At 7. Mm -hmm. uh, and this will be, yeah, this will be the main point of that, because the other two are going to be in April. So. Right. Uh, so we should be able to get. So it should start we at should 7 o'clock. We should get that done. Yeah. Okay. Do you. Uh, Any other business? Well, I was going to say, do you want to reach out to Adam about this? And yeah. All right, so we... Uh, Need him for the 16th, you mean? Well, that he, we want him to uh, review the proposed, the other proposed uh, uh, marijuana bylaw by prior to the 16th so that he can actually either come or send comments prior to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, While we were going through this permitting process for Mill Village, the RA land, uh, our APR land, they used it to provide square footage and stuff. And we talked about putting in our zoning that it wouldn't, you couldn't do that. I, and I, there's other communities uh, like Northampton already right. has that. So I, I think, think now that we're not allowing it in RA, that's not a, that's a mute point. Well, 
because the only in the overlay district. But you know district, what, John? Yeah, it's just maybe, marijuana. It could yeah, be something yeah, else. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And we need to do it. I'm not sure that's. Well, the reason I think that's important is we had this uh, big discussion about Route 5. And uh, I'll just take, uh, you know, any piece of land or mine. You know, if I don't have that much land there, but there's a lot of farmland behind it. So if I go to the farmer and I say, hey, look, it, I'm going to give you $300,000, but you can continue to farm this thing for the next 40 generations. But now I'm going to be able to count that land as part of mine, so now I've got more than enough area to cover. And that's the part that should not be allowed. But I think it's not in, it's not in the overlay district, right? So it wouldn't be allowed because it's not in the overlay district. But we're not talking about marijuana only, John. It could be any other commercial establishment that could go in that we, area. Yeah, we, the town, I mean, I don't know if you want to call it the town, the planning board, whatever. The situation that happened at Mill Village Road, it wasn't because of anything else, but they needed more land. You know, even though it was all RA, right. so there was, they took a, a chunk of, you know, APR land and counted that as right. part of the yeah. thing. And, you know, that, there's nothing in our bylaws that prevented that. So, you know, even though it bothered me personally, I didn't vote against it because, you know, it, it, we don't have any rule against it. So, you know. No, I, I hear what you're saying, but I. And I would have thought the state. I thought by having the overlay district, which is in commercial, that how could there be. But it's not well, just marijuana, John. It can be a, another commercial venture. Like Kip said, he has some commercial property, right. and it could be whatever's allowed in there, but he wouldn't meet the square footage. And, and I know. But and you, he could, so you're talking about another bylaw, not the marijuana zoning bylaw. Any, any, well, it came it, up when we looked at it. I know, but now we're talking just about the marijuana bylaw. So right, you're so, talking about more of a general. Yes, it'd so, be a right. general thing. Okay, so we don't put it in here, but we should put it in somewhere. Else. Yes. So I, I hear you. I hear you. All right, so I just wanted to separate it's necessary in here, that's great, but you're talking about more general. I'm yeah, trying to think of the overlay district. Marijuana district. I'm trying to think where that overlay district is, if there's any RA close I, to it. But it would have to, have to be in it, because you, can't, been, you couldn't include up. land outside of the overlay district. Even there if you there would be, for, kip, like, uh, off of uh, Mill Village. Yeah. There's some behind, RA land behind, there, I yeah, believe. Yeah. So, so that's what yeah, happens. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could end up with the same situation. Uh -huh. I'm trying to think where it fits, but we'll let him yep. figure that out. And maybe there's something else, like make sure it's on 5 and 10, that you can't count uh, DOT land or something. So of course maybe, not. You don't own it. I don't think you can count that anyway. Yeah, well, you right. can't but, count it. You know, but, but I'm just, you know, is there, is there another but agricultural thing we land, should? Agricultural land, there's, that, that could open up a big can of worms. And some, and some, I think some communities, if it's wetlands, they won't. It's like excluded. You can't count that as square yeah. footage. Yep. Oh. I'm not sure where it goes. <laughs> Very good. Three public hearings tonight. Good job. Anything else? Any uh, well, old business? Three, New business. <laughs> I've taken credit for having three public hearings. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, sir. Um, did I hear last time that, that, that our proposal had been sent to town council? Do you know whether it has been? Has he reviewed? I do not. Proposal? You don't know? I do not know. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Uh, I'd like to see something really be done with this R, uh, APR land, get a proposal, and have it at town meeting this year. Good. Take care of that. What, what are we, what are we well, supposed to do? I, I think we could just make another uh, zoning amendment to that. Where, where would it? Do a general, um, is it in the dimensional requirements or something? Or? That might be a good spot for it. That would be a good spot for you it. You want to come back with a recommendation? Northampton, have Chris call down there. They have a, a one right drawn up. I'm, I'm asking you to take the lead on it, Roger. Accepted? If not. I'll try to do my best. All right, that's all we can ask for. I am absolutely not going to take the lead on it, so someone needs to, so you're here. Thanks. Yeah, well, we have a consultant, Chris. I would think he would do it. He He's did. not our consultant. He's actually paid <laughs> for specific projects. So oh, okay. you can try to work it out, but uh, he's not ours. So 
which is another issue kind of. All right, well, reach out to me. I can help you too. That's all right, Kip. I'll go down to HAMP and I'll see if I can okay. get some stuff. Thank you. Anything else? Oh. I make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Who seconded that? 835. I'll, I'll, I'll second it. Okay.